mother. Where the class is made up of rescued orphan orangutans. They're here to learn skills so important it will make the difference between life and death. But for a devoted team of vets and keepers, looking after an unruly gang of orangutans oh. isn't easy. That's the one. It's a challenge. There's no book. You know how to rehabilitate an orangutan. At the end of the day, if I'm covered in poop and pee and, and sweat, I consider it a good day. The goal is simple. That every orphan will learn the ways of the forest, to climb a tree and forage for themselves, and eventually be given a second chance to be released and live in the wild again. Finally, we've got the chance to give him his freedom again. Final for the freedom. Ya, itu dengan yang dipelajari Amerika tu, di kata kejadian di pelajaran di. The rehabilitation of orangutans starts in the beach. In charge of the center is Spanish vet Carmele Sanchez. She's dedicated the last 10 years of her life to saving wildlife in Indonesia. We are now going to take the orangutans out. There is one orangutan who is uh, the naughty one, so you have to be careful. Hello, Matthew. We try to get the orangutans out in the forest as soon as possible when the sun rises. Orangutans are close relatives of ours and prone to our diseases. So the staff wear masks to protect them. With over 60 orangutans in their care, getting the younger ones to school in the morning is a challenge. We use the wheelbarrow because it's just an easier way to take them all in the forest. Tari so can you do it? Tari can do it. They all want to do their own thing. Okay. This group is the biggest orangutan in the forest. They're more naughty, more aggressive. It's more challenge to put them back to the forest. <laughs> <laughs> the orangutans <laughs> to learn the vital skills mm. their mothers have taught them to survive in the wild. The ones with the most to learn are in baby school. <laughs> Vet Christine leads the class. Baby school is definitely uh, an interesting place. Uh, that's that's kind of where maybe the bulk of our rehabilitation takes place, but it kind of is its own living, breathing machine. Christine has left behind her life in Wisconsin, USA, to help with the orphans recovery. Yeah, so this is breakfast for them. We've got it uh, tied to, to trees, basically to get them up and climbing and searching for, for food in the trees. For a baby orangutan, the most dangerous place to be is on the ground, as they are prone to predators. So lesson one, the most important lesson, is getting off the ground and up into the trees. You can see the heights marked on the trees. We basically need to know at what height they're <laughs> yeah, you know, they're more likely to be on the ground, and they're probably not as ready to go to the forest. Top of the class is three-year-old Joyce, the oldest and largest baby. Joyce is up there in the, in the top of the tree, and uh, I'm not sure if she's ready to make a nest yet, but uh, but it's a good sign that she's, she's up there climbing. But some still have a lot to learn. Though they might seem carefree, they all have a tragic background. 
They're orphans and the victims of rainforest destruction. Orangutans are now on the brink of extinction. Their homes have been cleared for logging and palm oil production. Unless they're rescued, the adults are often killed and the babies sold into the illegal pet trade. Before we even talk about rehabilitation, we have to rescue them. We rescue all these orangutans from death. But they're wild animals. And the team from International Animal Rescue must be skilled in the use of anesthetic dart guns to sedate the adults for rescuing them. We also rescue a lot of orangutans from misery, you know, from cages, chains, and from horrible, horrible situations. They you even wonder how an orangutan can survive. Many bear the scars of their captivity. Rikina has a head wound from a machete that most likely killed her mother. Since arrival at the center, she's turned to classmate Rocky for support and they become inseparable. Close bonds often form between the orphans. Not surprising, as in the wild, they would live with their mothers for up to eight years. Longer than any other great ape. It's curious, some of the relationships they form, they, they often get really close. It's, it's a way of comforting each other, but it's also good to see them kind of find their own way and gain some independence. To encourage the babies to climb high into the trees where they would naturally spend most of their lives requires some coaxing. That's a job for Lisa Burtonshaw, who sold her business in the UK to take charge of enrichment for the orangutans. Twelve hours after leaving the rescue centre, they finally reached the release site a section of forest with enough fruit and food sources to sustain Kalima. Yeah, yeah, we think this is a good spot. There are a couple of uh, trees like this durian tree that is good food for the orangutans. They love durians. So the idea is that um, we are going to open the cage and he will climb that tree. Although probably he's, he's going to go totally the other way. I'm quite nervous. Uh, I mean, not really nervous, he's excited or something. Uh, are you ready? Okay. See ya. moment that we were looking forward to for such a long time. Rescued from almost certain death, Kalipa's return to the wild paved the way for more from the rescue center. 